Kicking off our list of ripoffs today, we have Sapia Go, and this is a straight, blatant ripoff of Splatoon. And uh, it was released for the Android, and it's a blatant copy of the Nintendo hit Splatoon. What do you do? Well, you go around the map and you try to paint as much as possible in a cartoony third-person world with unique characters that have all their own personalities and playstyles. Does that sound familiar? But you won't have to try and get to know these characters because they're literally just the Splatoon characters. Ever want to play a crappier version of Splatoon on your phone? Look no further than Sapia Go. It has everything that you could want and more in a blatant copy. This one's pretty funny, and I wonder how they don't get sued. At number nine, Pokeballs Training. Straight ripoff of Pokemon Go. This one just, it doesn't really make sense to me. This is Pokeballs Training, a game where you just throw Pokeballs at things in the same style as when you're catching something in Pokemon Go. It's basically just a training app for Pokemon Go. If you know how the firing range works in Call of Duty, it's kind of a firing range for Pokemon Go, but with terrifying knockoff Pokemon and with completely different physics than the actual game. So all of this practice that you're getting here is absolutely useless. Not to mention, Pokemon Go is free. So why would you even need this? You can just go practice with Pokemon Go. You don't need to go download Pokeballs training. This one makes me mad because I'm a huge fan of Mega Man. At number eight, we have Classic Robo War, straight ripoff of the classic series Mega Man. There have been tons and tons of Mega Man ripoffs in the past. I mean, it's one of the most successful franchises ever, so naturally people are going to try and bank off of it. But Classic Robo War is perhaps the worst of the bunch. Look at this game. All they did was recolor Mega Man and rename him Robot. Yeah, super interesting name there, guys. What's even better is the production description on the App Store. Yeah, this is another mobile game. Is just the Mega Man X game description with the word Mega Man replaced by Robot. Classy. Once again, I don't see how some of these games and developers and studios don't get sued back to the Stone Age by the original content creators. What is the deal with ripping off classic titles like Metroid? Number seven, another bound is a ripoff, straight ripoff of Metroid Prime. As far as ripoffs go though, this one at least had a little more effort put into it, but it's still horrible. Another bound is a Metroid Prime clone released on the PC. Want to get the full another bound experience you may ask? Well, go get your Metroid Prime disc, assuming you still have it because you should. Pop it in your GameCube or your Wii if you still have one of those then set up a camera and put a whole bunch of random filters on it and then play the game while looking through the camera. That's exactly what Another Bound is like. It's literally just a really ugly filtered version of Metroid. It just, it, these are so laughable to me. Let's, next, what's next? This one probably makes a lot of people mad because there are a lot of Overwatch fans out there. Number six, we have the Legend of Titan, which is a blatant rip of the uh, the huge, huge game, Overwatch. As far as Overwatch ripoffs go, most people point at Paladins for being the most blatant. But believe it or not, there is something even more blatant and way more horrible than Paladins. Enter the Legend of the Titan, a game so similar to Overwatch that some YouTubers even had videos copyright claimed by Activision because they thought they were uploading Overwatch videos. Perhaps that's a sign that your game is a little too close to the source material, don't you think? In fact, in an interview, the developers were asked why it was so obviously an Overwatch clone, to which they responded that the models and gameplay were just placeholders, and they planned on making it much more original in the future. Why would you plan on making it more original in the future after you launched it? It's just, that's BS. That's complete BS. This one probably makes me the most angry at number five. Xanda the Linked Swords, which is a straight ripoff, you guessed it, of Legend of Zelda. I didn't mispronounce that. This game is legitimately called Xanda, The Linked Swords. It's a Zelda clone that butchers the two main characters' names in the title of the freaking game. The entire game is like that. It's just Zelda, but poopier. That's right, I said poopier. Want to know the best part, though? No one has ever actually finished this game because it's so broken. Many people have even debated, is there an end to the game? As no one can get past the first few levels. It seems appropriate because it's a crap game, they ripped off Zelda, and they probably didn't even finish the game, which means they ripped off the consumers as well. Garnering our number four spot on this prestigious list we have today is Sword Requiem, which is a ripoff of Fire Emblem. The Fire Emblem series has a massive following who love the way the game plays, the characters, the storyline, all of it. 
It's just a great series. Well, if you want to have some fun, go get a Fire Emblem fan, have them play Sword Requiem, or Requiem, however you say that, and then just watch them squirm with frustration. Seriously, this is just Fire Emblem with different names in the characters and slightly different character designs. Everything else is exactly the same. Copy infringement, copyright infringement, source material infringement, whatever you want to say, the lawyers should have drawn up the papers a long, long time ago. This one's funny. I, I just, I laugh when I see this one. At number three, what could you name a game if you were trying to rip off Mario Kart? Let's go with Mole Kart. That's right. Mole. M-O-L-E. Kart. Moly, moly, moly. That's the best title they've come up with. They're totally not a Mario Kart ripoff racing game, right? Well, in case you're not convinced by the fact that the title and the gameplay are stolen from Mario Kart, how about this? The courses are from Mario Kart as well. Seriously, this game just ripped courses from Mario Kart Wii, changed the character models, and re-released the game. They didn't even bother to change some of the items as Bullet Bill and the item boxes themselves were untouched. Needless to say, Nintendo was not happy about this and almost immediately ordered a takedown, which Mole Kart responded by just changing some of the textures. That's it. And somehow, Nintendo was okay with that, which is crazy because Nintendo is super, super picky. I don't understand the gaming world sometimes. At number two on today's ripoff list, the ripoff buffet, if you will, Final Combat, which is a ripoff of Team Fortress 2. Let me know in the comment section how many times I say ripoff in this video. Team Fortress 2 is still, to this day, one of the most popular PC games in the world, which pretty much spells out the fact that it has its fair share of ripoffs. If you're popular, people try to copy. But perhaps the dumbest and most obvious is Final Combat. It is a class-based shooter with big personalities for each of the classes, but every single class and character is obviously a copy and paste of those in TF2, and the gameplay is just lame and unfun. Also, I have to bring this up. Why would you rip off a free-to-play game like TF2? That really doesn't make any sense. What's stopping people from just playing the real TF2 for free instead of your stupid ripoff? Come on now. You have to, you have to uh, <laughs> work, work smarter, not harder. And we've come to the number one spot. You guys know how this works. I want to know if you could guess what is in the number one spot. I don't think you're going to get it today, but let me know on Twitter and in the comment section if you were able to guess it. And at our number one spot on this amazing list today, we have 3D Cartoon Land Safari, which is a copy of Super Mario 3D Land. Did you get it right? Because I bet, honestly, none of you did. Coming in at number one is 3D Cartoon Land Safari. This was an iPhone game that was literally just Super Mario 3D Land, but with worse graphics and horrible controls. What's worse about this is how it was somehow approved by Apple for their store. Seriously. This game that you're looking at right now was approved by consumers, for consumers, I'm sorry, by Apple. Sure, it's gone now, but how did it even get in the store in the first place? Were they bribed? Was it a troll? Was it a joke? I'm going to just say it was a troll until I hear otherwise, because I can't think of a single reason that would get Apple to consciously approve this game for their app store in any, any way. Especially ripping off a juggernaut series like the Mario series. You would just... Where's the, where's the control? Where's the, like, the quality control done on these games?